the time, those, those paradoxes just take the form, or a solution to them, just takes the form of like a little bit of borrowing, you know? Like, okay, so I'll miss my son's football game, and I'll go to do this reading in Zurich, because that's my job. But I will only do one, stay for one night in Zurich, so I can get back for the birthday party on the 4th. Um, and it's okay. You know, everybody can manage. You can, I can say, here I am a writer, here I am a father. But sometimes things happen that force a kind of ultimate decision or for you to locate yourself in a more, in a way that is at the expense of your other identity. To say, I'm here and I'm not here. Um, but it's rare that that happens in life. And I, I organized the book around two events like that. One of which I just started to read about the cell phone, which will create a, a kind of cataclysm where both Jacob and Julia, who have been kind of inside the marriage and outside the marriage, have to say, I am going to be here or I am not going to be here definitively. And then there's an earthquake in Israel, which precipitates a war that becomes so extreme that the prime minister asks all Jews around the world to come to Israel to fight. And Jacob, among others, has to say, I will go and fight or I will not go. There's no in between. I used to work in, in the summers at a jewelry store in DC, where I grew up. My grandfather opened a jewelry store, and uh, I would work there. And all the time, people would come in. Do you know what the most common thing someone would come into a jewelry store for? They'd say, my watch is running slow. And I would always say, no, it's not. I hate to tell you this, but a watch either runs or it doesn't run. Um, and I would always say, in the same way, though, a woman is pregnant or not pregnant. And I was like 13 at the time, I had pimples all over my face. And, and a woman is either pregnant uh, and, you know, so usually there's a kind of joke throughout the book that Jacob's therapist always says to him, why so binary? Like, why does it have to be this or that? Can't it be both or somewhere in the middle? And a lot of Jacob's problems are psychologically turning things, making things that are nuanced, oversimplifying them to make them black or white. Sometimes in life, there really are binary situations. You're going to do this or you're not going to do this. And those are very painful because to choose one is to choose against the other. And when they're on the scale of the existence of a family or when they're on the scale of going to war or potentially dying, it's, it's heavy. Um, if you take that example that the Israel Prime Minister called for all American Jews to come back and fight, I was thinking about this a lot because um, just the other night I was talking to my uncle and I'm from Finland, and Finland shares a huge border with Russia. And my uncle asked me, if Russia would invade Finland, would you come back from Switzerland and fight? And I said, I don't know. Uh, but I thought, I'm going to ask Jonathan Seven for. Uh, so have you? Come I would not fight for Finland, if that's right. <laughs> But have you contemplated the question if you would go to Israel? Well, of course I have, but in a way the point of the book is that contemplation is empty. That really is the point. That um, there are all of these words and ideas that we have that, that are, until they're tested, don't really mean anything. Um, we have all kinds of ideas about who we are and what we would like to do in certain situations, but they're actually just ideas about who we want to be and how we want to be seen by others, and um, we, we often react, I don't know if you've ever been in a traumatic situation, but it's often surprising how we act. Sometimes we are much smaller than we wish, or more cowardly, or we find ourselves like that wonderful movie, it may even have been a Swiss movie um, about the avalanche. The, the Tourist, it's a Swedish movie. The Swedish movie, yeah. what was it called? The Tourist. I don't think that's what it was translated as, but you know the one I'm talking about, yeah. it's recent. The family and the, 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 the father runs, runs away yeah, yeah, thinks yeah. he was staying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a great Beautiful movie. movie, yeah. great movie. Um, so sometimes we're smaller, and then sometimes, you know, there are these um, cases of children who are like pinned under a car, and the mother will come and lift the car off the kid. This actually happens, it's not a story, because of the adrenaline you know, allows for this moment of kind of almost superhuman strength where you, you, you exceed 
your what you would perceive to have been your limitations. So until it happens, we can't know. And that's why I, I wanted to have these extreme situations in the book that would, so that we would know what they would do. Have you experienced such a superhuman moment and would you like to share with us? I've had situations in my life um, where I've encountered traumas. When I was nine, I, um, in, a, in a funny way, these are, I've never put these two together, but they belong together. When I was nine, I was in a summer camp and in a science class, and there's a, a horrible explosion, an accident. It was a chemistry class, and I was very lucky. I happened to be standing at the door, but I, the table that I had been at and was supposed to be at, the kids were really severely burned, almost died. And I ended up, I ran into the hallway and I saw my best friend, who on Halloween we used to not dress up, and we would tell everybody that we were dressed as each other, because that's how similar we looked. And I saw him and his skin was all peeled back off his face. It was horrible, horrible, horrible. And I didn't know what my own condition was. And I said to him, um, can you tell me what I look like? I said, because you look terrible. You know, you look horrible. I was nine, it's just it's what you would, I don't know. But I said, you, you look horrible, horrible, horrible. Can you tell me what I look like? And he said, you look fine. And he described me to me. And I think of that as the most kind of shameful thing I've ever done. And I think of his response as the most good thing that anybody's ever done. Um, and then flashing forward, um, my son actually had an injury on his hand that was not unlike the one in the book. 